Welcome to the Recon Trader. In today's video, I will share with you an alternative to the Bybit Exchange. As earlier this week, Bybit announced they will be requiring KYC data on all of their customers. And so if you're not familiar with what KYC is, it's know your customer data. And that basically would entail documentation like government issued IDs, social security numbers, etc and bybit is now going to require that information from all their customers so for me someone who is not interested in providing that intel to an exchange i need an alternative exchange and in reality these days i am becoming more and more leery of keeping my funds on these exchanges that are basically custodial exchanges meaning that they're in control of my funds and they hold my keys and with that in mind, the saying goes, not your keys, not your crypto. Now, the good news is Bybit actually offers a decentralized exchange or a DEX, and that is Apex, where you keep control of your assets or your keys in a wallet like MetaMask. So who or what is Apex? Well, it turns out that Apex is brought to you by Bybit, but it's a decentralized version and a non-custodial and a non-KYC derivatives protocol engineered to deliver limited access to perpetual swap markets with its order book model. And the order book model is the model you would be accustomed to if you've been day trading on a platform like Bybit, where you actually have your order book, you place limit or market orders. But we will take a deeper dive into the actual order book protocol interface in a moment. But before we do, I know some of you may be wondering, is it risky to trade on a DEX? Well, DEXs have no access to the user funds. This not only lowers the risk of hacking attacks, but also lessens interference from third parties, either from management or the exchanges or local authorities. Funds will not be frozen, withdrawals won't be delayed or denied, and exchanges won't be blocked by legislative authorities. Now, fortunately for me, I did not use FTX, but FTX was a centralized exchange, not a decentralized exchange, and therefore a lot of users had their funds frozen and withdrawals basically denied. So at the end of the day, in my opinion, a DEX is far less risky than a centralized exchange, but you need to do your own recon and be responsible for your own decisions. So with that all in mind, let's actually jump over to Apex and take a look at the actual order book protocol and how you can trade on this platform without KYC and actually still maintain control of your assets. So this is what the Apex Pro decentralized exchange would look like. And I will drop a link to the Apex Pro Dex in the description down below. Now, the first thing you will need to do, there's really no sign up process, but you do need to connect your wallet to the actual exchange. So if you just click on connect wallet over here, you can choose which wallet you want to actually connect. And today I will be connecting my MetaMask wallet. So I just give that a click. And now you can see my MetaMask wallet is starting to connect to the actual DEX. And in this case, I need to actually switch from the Avalanche network in my wallet over to the Ethereum mainnet so I can click switch network. Now my MetaMask wallet is connected to the exchange via the Ethereum network. However, Ethereum's fees can be on the high side, so I actually want to connect via one of these other chains that offer lower fees, like BNB chain or Polygon. Now, with that in mind, you obviously need a MetaMask wallet. You will also need funds in one of these other mainnets. You can see up here is the Ethereum mainnet. If I click the drop down, I can jump over to, say, the Binance Smart Chain. And you can see I hold some BNB in this account. And it is important to have some BNB in the account for any fees that might occur. And if we scroll down, you can see I have USDC available to actually use for trading on Apex Pro. So that would be the chain I want to switch to. So I can change that by simply clicking on Ethereum in this case. Scroll down to BNB chain, give that a click. 
it's going to ask for authorization to switch between the two different main nets. So now I'm all set to start trading using my BNB account with my MetaMask wallet. And in order to actually begin trading, the first thing you'll need to do is make a deposit right over here by clicking on deposit. Now deposit is a little misleading. This actually operates with smart contracts. So you're not actually depositing money in an exchange like you would be with Bybit or Coinbase or one of those third parties. It's actually all just locked up via a smart contract. And so you basically control that smart contract and thus you're still in control of your funds and your own keys in your MetaMask wallet. So if I click deposit, I can now obviously select which chain I want to go with. In this case, it is the BNB chain. Next, I would need to select the asset. And since we're trading USDC perpetual contracts, I want to deposit USDC. The amount I want to deposit will go with 500 USDC. Now, before I can actually confirm the deposit, I need to enable USDC for my first deposit on the DEX. So if I click enable USDC, I can set a spending cap. In this case, my spending cap will be 500 USDC. I will pay a small fee in BNB of about five cents. Approve that. Transaction's been confirmed, and now I can actually confirm the deposit. So click confirm deposit. Again, I will need to make a small fee to create this contract. Again, it's just a smart contract. It's not truly a deposit. And part of the reason why I switched to BNB chain over Ethernet is because of the lower fees. So now I can click confirm, and my non-Ethereum deposit has been confirmed. And now you can see the available margin over here on the right hand side of the screen is 500 USDC and thus my total equity is 500 USDC. And that's it. We're ready to trade and at any point in time I could withdraw those funds by clicking the withdraw button. I could then send these USDC to any one of my available exchanges and if I wanted to withdraw at all I can just click on max and it's only going to send me back 4.99 because there is a one dollar fee to withdraw so there are some deposit and withdraw fees however they are very minimal especially when you consider you have control of your funds versus being at risk of a centralized exchange like ftx basically locking up your funds and not ever giving them back to you. But obviously today we're not going to be doing a withdrawal. We're actually looking to trade on Apex. So that's enough jaw jacking. Let's actually place a trade over here on the Apex exchange. Now the first thing I need to do is select what pair I want to trade. And if you click on the little down button over here on BTC USD, you will find a list of different assets you can trade. So for today's example, let's trade ETH USD if I give that a click and that will pull up the ETH USDC chart and now I need to select whether I want to do a limit order or a market order or a conditional order. Now limit order would actually fill at the order price that I put in assuming that price is hit. So if I put in 1884 and I'm looking to get short then it would actually wait for Ethereum's price to go back up. Right now it's at 1882. It would wait for Ethereum's price to reach 1884 before actually getting short. And with that being said, we should jump over here to the trading fee structure. And you can see APX Pro uses a maker taker fee model for determining its trade fees. And basically the maker fees are 0.02 and the taker fees are 0.05. Now, maker is essentially a limit order you are creating or making a limit order to hit the order book and then a taker fee is a market order you are essentially taking an order off of the order book so you generally pay less for a maker fee because you're creating the market 
and you pay more for a taker fee because you're taking from the market. And so for the APX DEX, your maker fee is going to be 0.02% and your taker fee is going to be 0.05%. If you're familiar with fees across most of your centralized exchanges, this is very much in line with those fees. So you're not actually paying more to trade on the APX DEX. You're paying at a minimum pretty much the same. However, in the future, they are looking to introduce a tiered trading fee structure. So you could actually get a reduction in fees in the future, depending on your trading volume. Now we can continue placing this limit order. So we've got our limit price of 1884, which would end up over here on the order book. Next, we need to determine how much we want to trade and we can do it either by the quantity of ETH or if we click on USD, I can actually put in the order value. And in this case, let's give it 250 USD. But this value would actually be based on my leverage that I have selected. So I guess we should talk about the leverage real quick. Currently, the leverage is set at 30x, which is the maximum. Now, I wouldn't use 30x. I would use, let's say, 10x. So I can change that to 10x. Click Confirm. And now with a 10x leverage, 250 USD would be 0.13 ETH. Now another option is to actually select a percentage of your actual available margin. In this case, I could click 50% and that would actually bump the USDC amount to 2449 or 1.3 ETH because again, you apply that 10x leverage to the amount. Because again, these figures here are based on 10x of my available margin. Now, something else to consider with a limit order, if ETH's price is higher than this 1884 when I place the order, I will actually get filled if I'm going short at that higher price, and that will be filled at a market order unless I click post only. And basically post only order will be executed as a maker order, but if it can be executed immediately as a taker order, like in this case, my limit order was 1884, ETH's price is 1885 and a quarter, it could actually be executed immediately as a taker order. So in this case, if I were to hit sell short right now, my order would automatically be canceled and I would not be charged the taker fee obviously because the order is canceled and that's important if you're looking to reduce the fees you're paying and only want to pay the maker fee of 0.02 percent versus that 0.05 percent now before i actually place this order i can configure take profit or stop losses depending on if i'm going long or short in this case i am looking to get short so i would click on sell short with tpsl take profit stop loss and then I can take profit either in USDC, a dollar amount, or as a percentage. Now, I typically trade based on a percentage. And so I would base this on what percentage I'm actually looking to take profit at. And you can do that a few different ways. You could say if I got involved right up here, I'm looking to maybe see if ETH's price can return back down to this area here. That would be 0.4%. Or with 10x leverage, that'd be a 4% profit. So I could put in, let's say, 4%. And you see the price would be at around 1876. will trigger a market take profit order. And then for the stop loss, same thing. I could do the percentage versus the dollar amount. And so for this example, we're looking for a one-to-one -one risk versus reward ratio. And that would put us at around 1892. So again, I'd be looking at 4%. And the index price of 1891.55 will trigger a market stop loss order. And so now with the take profit and stop loss configured, I can go ahead and click sell short. And then my order was filled immediately because again, the price was above my 1884. And so I actually got filled at 1884.75. And therefore I will end up paying the taker fee, not the maker fee. So I pay a little higher fee. And now under positions, you can see I actually have one position open, the ETH USD short 10x leverage 
the amount of ETH is 1.3, the value is 24.51, my entry price was 1884.75, now the liquidation value is 22.52.65, and that is important because you never want to be liquidated, you should always at a minimum have a stop loss below your liquidation price so you don't get liquidated. And as you recall, I did set up that stop loss at 1891.55, so that is well below the 2252. Now, my unrealized PL is currently 1.1% or $2.73 USD. And again, I currently have my take profit and stop loss set. Now I could add another take profit. Maybe I want to scale out of the position. And so I could add another take profit order. Another option is I could actually have this position closed by a limit order because again you would pay the lower fee of a maker fee versus the taker fee with a limit order. And so I think that pretty much wraps it up. I just wanted to actually do a quick video on alternatives to Bybit Exchange since they are now going to be requiring KYC for all of their customers. This was not intended to be a full-blown tutorial, but as you can see, it's extremely similar to Bybit, which would make sense since this is actually Bybit's decentralized exchange. Now, with that being said, I will go a little further into the weeds and do a more detailed tutorial in a future video. So now would be a good time to shoot that subscribe button so you don't miss that future video. If you like this video, do me a favor, spike a like. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments section down below. And until next time, remember, never send your money into battle without first doing your recon. See you in the next video.